in some strange and unexpected ways. Lake Nakuru National Park in Kenya is home to thousands of warthogs. They're common but shy and skittish animals which prefer to stay well in the background or out of sight underground. A warthog is no beauty but it is strangely endearing. What it lacks in looks it makes up for in character. In this story, they are the stars. The central characters are all female. Three generations of one family. Her grandmother, her daughter, and granddaughter. They live in a triple burrow. Three holes with connecting tunnels and underground caverns. The three sows give birth within days of each other, but alone and in separate tunnels, well away from the triple burrow. At three weeks old, even warthogs are adorable. These tiny babies belong to the youngest of the three sows and are her first litter. Her tusks are small, so she's probably two years old. All three mothers are now anxious to reunite. As soon as their babies are strong enough, the females leave their maternity dens. In comparison with her granddaughter, the oldest sow is long in the tooth and could be eight or nine years old. She will have made the journey back to the family home many times with young from previous years. The yearlings from last year's litters were left to fend for themselves while their mothers gave birth. But the young females are now accepted back into the family to help to raise their new siblings. The year-old males, however, will have a different fate. Warthogs raise their young communally. In this extended family, all the babies will benefit from the combined efforts of three mothers from three generations. The new hoglets are still too young to spend the hottest part of the day above ground. Their burrows are a vital sanctuary. Here they can escape from the heat and from predators. A family of jackals has recently moved into a disused warthog hole, very close to the triple burrow. They often try to take baby hogs. Out on the plains, the temperature rises to an uncomfortable 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that their mothers are back home, the year-old males from last year's litters head for the triple burrow. They can smell their family underground, but they get a hostile reception. Adult males sometimes kill young hoglets, even their own relatives. Now that the females have tiny babies, they seem to be nervous of their year-old sons. Confused by their mother's rejection and unable to take refuge underground, 
the young males are left out in the midday sun. Their safest option is to head for the open expanses round Lake Nakuru. It's famous for flamingos. Sometimes over two million of these birds come here to feed. Nakuru is a soda lake and too saline to drink. In the wet season, it is fed by two rivers and they're an important source of fresh water. Much of the park's wildlife gathers to drink where the rivers run through the plain bordering the lake. It is a favourite place for the young male warthogs. Adult boars too spend the heat of the day near water, either alone or in small bachelor groups. The males have much bigger facial warts and longer tusks than the females. They're not designed to fend off enemies, but even so they make effective weapons. The yearling males, with just tiny tusks, are not so well armed. Even though the youngsters are only half grown, they're stocky and muscular. They're not easy to bring down, even for a leopard. Success at last. But it's a consolation prize. Leopards are well known for the variety of prey they eat, but killing pelicans is most unusual. The young males were lucky this time, but without the protection of the family group, they'll be vulnerable for months to come. A jackal is always on the lookout for easy prey. It has a reputation as a scavenger, but in reality, it's a very capable hunter, and it's particularly fond of suckling pig. The sows will not tolerate jackals near the triple burrow. But as the hoglets get older, the family ventures further from home to feed. This is the moment the jackal has been waiting for. But an angry sow is a formidable adversary, and she'll risk her life in defense of her family. Male warthogs play no part in defending the babies. Their mothers are left to take sole responsibility.
The females' combined efforts keep the jackal at bay long enough for one of the sows to herd some of the hoglets down a boat hole. Once they're safe, she returns immediately to help defend those still in danger. The hoglets instinctively scatter for their lives, terrified by the victim's squeals. One baby is dead, the rest are missing. The young jackals were born five months ago. Their weaning coincides with the birth of the hoglets. Each pup now needs two pounds of meat a day. One small warthog will not satisfy five hungry mouths. Their parents are catching up to four hoglets a day to feed their growing pups. The lost hoglets must find their way home and get underground quickly if they're not to fall prey to the jackals. Instinct leads them back to the triple burrow. But the danger isn't over yet. A strange family has moved in and even female warthogs occasionally attack unrelated babies. The youngsters have the sense to retreat down one of the unoccupied entrances to the triple burrow. Several hours pass before the females return to the burrow, having abandoned the search for their missing offspring out on the plains. The interlopers are wary. The smell of the resident family is strong. They are not prepared to fight to maintain possession of the hole. The returning mothers haven't given up hope. <laughs> Remarkably, they're still alive, although hot and very thirsty. Even though the sows live together, they will only nurse their own young. The largest hoglet in this group knows he's with the wrong female. He recognizes his own mother's grunts. Warthogs regard their burrows as exclusively their own while they are in residence, but they are prepared to share with birds. At the mouth of most of the larger burrows, there's a family of anteater chats. Like the warthogs, the birds live communally, with fledglings from previous broods helping to raise the youngest chicks. <coughs> Sharing living quarters is of mutual benefit to both parties. Warthogs attract a lot of insects, which provide the chats with food, and the birds are quick to raise the alarm if they spot danger, so the sows can judge by their behavior if it's safe to go off to feed.
Female warthogs keep to the open plains. They rarely venture into the shade and shadows. Dappled light is the perfect camouflage for a spotted cat. As evening approaches, a leopardess calls her cub. Bush pigs are very shy and rarely seen. They rely on thick cover rather than burrows to escape leopards. The cub answers to identify himself. Although they're solitary cats, the bond between a mother and her offspring is long-lasting. The female will share her food until the cub is two years old and can kill for himself. The leopards usually start hunting soon after dark, so the sows must get their hoglets underground before nightfall. The yearling males are also aware of the dangers of the night. Once again, they return to the triple burrow to try and rejoin the family. The sows are still hostile. Young males can be boisterous, and the new babies could easily get crushed in the confined space underground. It threatens to be a long, cold night. Just before nightfall, the young males find an empty burrow. It will give them some shelter, but it's too shallow to offer them a safe night's sleep. The young male warthogs cower near the entrance of their temporary shelter. A pair of hyenas pick up their scent. The roof of this old burrow caved in long ago. These adolescent hyenas are not brave enough to venture beyond the entrance. They can smell warthogs, but they can't yet tell the difference between a defenseless youngster and an angry old sow. Luckily for the young males, they weren't prepared to take any risks.
It's chilly at daybreak. The hogs lie around in huddled heaps, waiting for the sun to warm them up. The leopardess knows the hogs are slow and sleepy in the morning, so it's an ideal time for her to hunt. She patrols her territory, checking warthog holes, just in case an unwary youngster has overslept. The young males spent a restless night and are catching up on lost sleep. A small movement in the shallow burrow gives them away. The sound and smell of death seem to have a macabre attraction for the boys. The struggle underground has tired the leopardess, but she must quickly hide her kill from scavengers before collecting her cub from the forest to share the food. It's now the dry season, and all the animals in the park will soon feel its effect. The rivers have dried up, and Lake Nakuru is evaporating fast. As the Soda Lake recedes, the water gradually gets shallower and increasingly alkaline. The flamingos can now wade further into the lake. They are one of the few animals which can drink the lake water. A spring still runs into a far corner of the lake. It's the only source of fresh water left. Every day pelicans come to wash soda crystals from their feathers. As the lake continues to shrink, the soda gets so concentrated, the pelicans leave and fly to a freshwater lake 70 miles to the south. For most of the other animals in the park, there is no escape. When the grass is reduced to dry stubble, the grazers start to go hungry. The warthogs have an advantage over the antelopes. They can grub up nutritious bulbs and roots with their strong muscular snouts. As hunger and the heat become increasingly oppressive, the lure of the forest proves irresistible to some of the larger boars. It's cooler under the trees. The new arrivals have not gone unnoticed. This is a chance for the young leopard to practice his hunting skills under the watchful eye of his mother. The boars are much less afraid of the young leopard than he is of them. But when a boar spots the adult female, his confident stand becomes a prudent retreat. 
A constant stream of potential targets now file into the forest. And reassured by his mother's presence, the cub keeps on trying. <laughs> His attack is half-hearted, but he's learning. The leopards will not go hungry for long. Beyond the forest, both the land and the animals are parched. The heat is now intense and more life-threatening than predators. The warthogs compete with the jackals for shade. The jackal pups, like the leopard cub, are also learning to hunt. The family is surrounded, but the sows seem unconcerned. Their efforts to see off the enemy are no more than token gestures. <laughs> The young warthog is bigger and stronger now, but with five against one, the odds seem stacked against him. But even at this age, warthogs have strong characters. The pups won't starve. There'll soon be plenty of food to scavenge. It's the warthogs which need to be tough to survive the hard times that lie ahead. This year the rains are late and the dry season is turning into a drought. There's almost no grass and little fresh water. Once again, the warthogs have the edge over the grazers. They're omnivores and as the antelope begin to die, they provide food for the family. Now the river has stopped flowing, its bed is reduced to dry sand. There is water down there, the impala can sense it, but they can't get to it. Yet again, the warthogs have an advantage. When they smell water underground, they use their powerful snouts to dig down to it. All they'll get is a few mouthfuls of muddy water, but it's enough to keep them going for now. <laughs> the artful baboons wait to cash in on the hog's hard work. They are thirsty, but they're also smart and no better than to risk being gored by a sharp tusk. <laughs> As Africa seems to hold her breath waiting for the rains, even the warthogs are suffering. Now too weak to root, one of the triple burrow sows is starving. Her hoglets are in misery too. Their mother has little milk. Eating dead grass is futile, but they are very hungry. Weak from lack of water as well as food, the sow must get out of the sun. Her youngsters struggle to keep up. <laughs> 
Their mother is exhausted, but if she doesn't suckle her hoglets, they'll die. Even though she's literally on her knees, her maternal instincts are strong. Throughout the park, hoglets are dying of starvation. The tawny eagle gets much of its food by scavenging, and now it takes advantage of the plight of others. The eagle is obviously getting plenty to eat. It is disturbed by the family returning to their burrow, but it makes no attempt to carry off its meal. Hunger forces the sows to compete for food. They're so desperate, they'll even eat their own kind. The females are tense. The smell of blood makes them nervous. When a squabble threatens to become too serious, they flee rather than fight. Even the fresh groundwater below the river bed has now dried up. And again, it's the ever resourceful warthogs that provide a lifeline. The hogs dig shallow pits near the lake edge and wait for the water to filter through the mud. As it seeps into the pool, it loses some of its salinity. It's still salty, but drinkable, just. It will keep the hogs and the baboons going for a while, but even they can't survive on it for long. At last, there's a sign that the rains are on the way. For many animals, it's too late. The strong winds blow up dust storms, but they'll also bring rain clouds with them. While most animals are starving, the leopards have been feasting. The hunters, at least, will end the misery for many of them. In contrast to their prey, the predators are in peak condition. The hyenas are thriving, feasting on the victims of the famine. Massive teeth are no defense against a drought.
The rainy season in Nakuru lasts a couple of months. The land is refreshed with new growth and renewed vigour. The Triple Burrow family is still together. All three sows have survived. Remarkably, even the starving female pulled through, but not all the youngsters made it. The river has burst its banks and the swamp is flooded again. A hippo on land and a cantankerous bull buffalo are two of the most dangerous animals in Africa. When the pair clash, the outcome is uncertain. But the long fight for survival is not over yet. The male warthogs need to be in peak condition now. The females will soon be ready to mate. Perhaps the fiercest battle is yet to come. A male warthog's main aim in life is to win as many mates as possible. Their long tusks, huge warts and large size are all designed to achieve just this goal. As the rutting season begins, the mature boars size each other up. At first, their behaviour is ritualised. Each of them tries to intimidate the other without resorting to violence. Digging and pawing at the ground helps to release pent-up energy. The males are so preoccupied by sex that they fail to... A spotted coat perfectly conceals the cat against a background of shadows and dappled light. The leopard is one of the few cats which will launch an attack from above. But taking on an adult boar is risky, even if she has surprise on her side and can strike with lightning speed. The hog can't see or smell the camouflage cat and is unaware of any danger. The leopard suffers for her rash move. But the wound is only skin deep and will heal. The easy times for the predators have passed, for now. The few weeks after the rains belong to the grazing animals. Giraffes give birth all year round, but at Nakuru, the majority are born soon after the wet season. Throughout her two-hour labour, this female has been accompanied by a lone male. But when the calf arrives, the surprise is too much for him. The calf's first experience of life is the shock of being dropped from six feet, but it doesn't appear to be suffering any ill effects. It is very vulnerable until it can run. Lions, hyenas and leopards 
will all kill a newborn giraffe. It must get to its feet and find its first drink of milk. Within half an hour, it's up and standing nearly six feet tall. In just a few more hours, it will be able to follow its mother and rejoin the herd. The warthogs also have a new member in their family. As soon as one of the females starts to show signs of coming into season, a top-ranking male joins the family. He follows the sow wherever she goes, only leaving her side to chase off rivals. There are limits to how far a female will allow any male to follow her. Underground is definitely out of bounds. The burrows now serve as a temporary refuge from the persistent and not yet welcome suitor. Once again, it's the male who is left out in the cold, fighting his battles alone. The dominant male can't afford to break his vigil now. He must keep guard outside the burrow until the female comes above ground again. The boar has camped out all night in the cold. Beneath him, the family are just waking. As soon as there are stirrings underground, the male calls to encourage the female to join him. The rival boars are still out there, watching and waiting for a chance to take over. This morning, the female is in a more receptive mood and no longer rejects the male's advances. When the females are at the height of oestrus, the challenges between the boars become deadly serious. The massive warts on their faces make the individual look bigger, but they are not just for show. They protect their eyes and jaws when the head-on duels of two evenly matched males become a vicious battle for the right to mate. Even the female is alarmed at the ferocity of the fight. A dominant boar, in his prime, 
has every chance of mating with all the females in the family, since they all come into season within days of each other. The young males don't play any part. Their time will come another year. Sometimes defeated males lose more than the right to mate. All the members of the family are now a year older. More than half the hoglets have survived. For now, they're oblivious to the danger the future may bring, as they concentrate on the sensual pleasures of the present. Warthogs may not be one of the most attractive characters on the African sea, but they do have a surprising charm. In its own way, warts and all, the warthog is a star. The Great Bear Rainforest of British Columbia is 21 million acres of wilderness. A hundred large intact valleys and many smaller ones make this region one of the last great hopes for the conservation of a functioning large regional temperate rainforest. Join me on today's expedition as we travel deep into this paradise and into the heart of the Great Bear. Coming up next. Hi, I'm Rick Steves with more of the it's best Genesis. of Europe. Every Italy connoisseur in Prague has always been beautiful. In Germany, Germany, the Empress, Irish civilization, the Eiffel Tower was built. I hope you've enjoyed the magic of the place. Perched on a pinnacle in a grand canyon, the traffic-free village of Civita is 